consortium have submitted a report to the Ministry of Energy. That report is currently sitting with um, the regulatory body, uh, EPRA, Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Body. The report will be handed over to the Minister or the CS for Energy, and in line with the Petroleum Act, it should not be in that office for more than 30 days. Uh, it will then come to Parliament, and the Act also stipulates that it should not be in Parliament for more than uh, 90 days. For purposes of you know, the commerciality, the, the, the economy of uh, pulling out the oil, and the report does say we can be able to do up to 120 million um, there is a, a figure that I, I let me not misquote because I'm on I'm talking to the whole world 120 kilo barrels per day uh, which when you convert at about 160 liters to the barrel is significant and that can address uh, the challenge in the country but that's slightly on the longer term uh, we will work together to expedite and make sure we don't work with 30 days, we don't work with 90 days, and therefore be able to tell the prospecting company to quickly get down and start uh, pulling out the product. And uh, that might give us the security of the challenge we are currently facing. Uh, if I combine this with uh, Mwishimiwa Lesuda's uh, question, because they are, they are basically cutting across, uh, on the same petroleum uh, area uh, the, with the price of fuel. It's a world phenomenon. The challenges of uh, Ukraine and Russia and the U.S. and Canada refusing to buy, uh, putting an embargo against buying that product um, created the supply-demand challenge. And uh, you, we may not be aware, but if we read, we know that the fuel prices uh, in the UK, in Canada, in Singapore, are, are running at, I was reading, uh, Singapore is going at $9 to the litre. When I converted, that's about uh, 300 shillings to the litre. Uh, we don't think this um, Ukraine-Russia uh, challenge will be forever, but certainly we need to mitigate and address our challenge. And... Um, I think it's uh, an opportunity to think out of the box and ask ourselves how can we be self-reliant? And that's why I was saying let me cut across with Daoud's question in terms of developing quickly what is ours so that we are not over-reliant on uh, the other economies out there. And I was, while reading that I found a quote by Joe Biden that said, uh, when we are out of this challenge we'll be stronger. Uh, will be stronger and the world will be stronger and less reliant on, on fossil fuel. But, but when I paraphrase that, as a country, we really need to work on our geothermal, being an equatorial country, we'll work on our solar, work on storage of power so that we go into more of the electric cars with the conversion kits being fairly cheap today. So, yes, it's a concern, it's a global challenge, and yet we think we are going to come out of it more stronger. Uh, uh, refinery, uh, Buana Hamisi, was, Hamisi was sitting somewhere over there. Um, we need to work on, I don't know whether it's a miracle, but I mean, there's no reason why anybody should pay for what they have not used. And as we work to introduce the um, uh, intelligent or whatever meters, we really also need to think out of the box on how Kenya power trades. Uh, think about how Safaricom trades. They give you a zone to manage, and you can buy power in bulk, and you prepay. For those of us who work for Safaricom, Safaricom is not owed any money. Uh, you prepay airtime and distribute. Collect the money, prepay, you collect more. There is no reason why Kenya Power cannot adopt those kind of simple uh, frameworks of a region being given to... Uh, uh, a manager or rather a business person, you buy in bulk at a discount, you make you a little money and uh, you manage your customers. So certainly we'll be working together to look at how to re-engineer the traditional way of handling customers from Kenya Power, uh, bringing in the smart meters and working with uh, everybody uh, to ensure that um, we don't just pay what uh, we have not spent and which is going into people's pockets.
we, we, we will be able to do that. Russell Marsabet, I passionately loved that county when we were developing the wind power projects. There is no reason why the developer on the project, you know when you develop 400 megawatts, there is the power which is retained to manage the equipments. Um, and, and that power should have really uh, looked at the community of interest. We need to sit down and look at using the organic, the power that, when you develop 400, we are possibly retained for 20 for the use to manage the equipment because they need power to basically uh, support the operations within the, the site. And it should really, it shouldn't be asking for too much uh, because I think the power we need within the community will not be more than three, four, five megawatts. And then therefore we need to revisit and under the act where the resource sharing of um, local resources with the community, the county and the national government, we should see how to support the community around Marsabet so that we do not just evacuate power the way we evacuate water out of Muranga and the locals uh, are just see the, 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 the power going out of their, their county and they, they don't benefit. So we can look at that. Um, Naisul, I think I did combine your question with with, with, uh, with